What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another business breakthrough. In today's business breakthrough, I sit down with Chris Hildebrand. He owns Renegade Painting Company in Canada. And one thing that really stuck out to me about Chris was just the way he approached business, how he really loves his employees, how he really wants to create that excellent experience. He understands communication, but there's something stopping him from growing. And I think we were able to hammer out what that was. And I think uh, it's a common problem amongst a lot of contractors. So I'm excited for you to listen to this business breakthrough and it starts right now. The big question you need to ask yourself every day is, do I own a job or do I own a business? And unfortunately, the majority of contractors out there own a job. That's right, they're a slave to their own business. But the other side of the fence is so much greener, it's so much better, and that's when you're finally fully in control of your destiny, your freedom, your time, and that's what Contractor Secrets is about. It's about taking back our time, building a business with systems, standards, values, procedures, putting yourself in the driver's seat, and that's what it's about. So I'm excited. I'm happy to have you here. Let's dive into the Contractor Secrets Podcast. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to uh, the Business Breakthrough. Chris is here with me today with Renegade Painting Company in Canada. And we just hammered out, man. Honestly, whenever I do one of these, I just like to ask, what's going really well right now for you and your business? What is something that you have the standard of that you want to go better? What is some? Tell me those two things. Um, standard of what I'd like to do or have go better would definitely be um, just my personal organization. Uh, I have uh, I have a strong organizational skill set when things are in a manageable condition. Um, okay. We'll use an example of a physical space. Um, okay. I, I I'm a big fan of everything has a home, and if yeah. it doesn't have a home, you either awesome. shouldn't have it or you need to make a home for it. And if you're not able or willing to do that, then everything just is, it stays in a constant state. I can see that in, 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 the, in the scene you have behind you. It seems like- you I, have, I just bought a, a new set of shelving. So I like my office is in my front kind of yeah. tool stage. That's how you kind of like, that's kind of how you- like, That's my control. Can, can manage your day <laughs> essentially yeah. is like, you know where everything is as much as possible in your physical world. So yeah. you might be kind of, and I'm just kind of just trying to understand, and I know you're going to tell me, but you're probably saying that in your business world, that area is kind of in disarray and that causes you stress. Yeah, I think it's, I, I'm right now the, I think the biggest, one of the biggest anxiety causing aspects for me is um, kind of being caught in between two worlds. Um, right. My, my goal for this year was to, um, pay out all my business debt and have that cleared. And okay. also I, I want to be able to sit here on a daily basis all day and work on my business. I, I don't, right. I don't want to touch a paintbrush. I don't want to climb a ladder unless yeah. it's when I'm running out to go check out a, a potential job, do right. an estimate. Love that's it. what I want, right? Sure. That's where prosperity is. How far uh, away are you from that now? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, this year has a, a really, really good opportunity for us. Um, the whole trades industry in, in my area is absolutely booming right now. Um, I'm, I'm booked until uh, the end of the first week in September, um, getting some new, new builder clients. Um, nice. And so one, one job or one contract that I was awarded um, booked, uh, seven, no, six, six weeks. So let's talk about the team. About How many painters do you have working with you? How many painters do you have? Right now I have two and a half, three. I two just brought, in, brought on a guy on a kind of casual off and on yeah. basis for the time timer. being. Or what is your, um, what is, uh, how long have you been in business? Uh, since 2019 and well, Okay, my my company, as it's named and as it's registered, is is since tw uh, the end of twenty nineteen. But okay. I've been painting for a couple of years prior to that. Under prior to that, for somebody name. else. 
Okay. Uh, no, for myself, just under a just a, just a and you were just working solo, didn't really have plans to expand and do all this stuff. Okay. Oh no, I always have plans to expand. I everything I touch and do. So my you try. So you kind of had a rebrand in 2019 yeah. where you're like, let me make it a little more professional. Yeah, I wanted things to be different. And Love so I needed a I needed a fresh image. I needed a fresh mentality. I needed something that would encompass the fact that. I was going to rebel against all the, the shitty ways I was doing things before. And that's right. kind of what the name renegade is there for. Um, we are rebel. I'm rebelling against the way I was prior. So, and now it's this new mission of professionalism, high standard, creating really a great experience for your customers, being a superior mm -hmm. brand. I love all that. That's all the stuff that I, and you know, many people that, you know, I like to associate with represent because we are in an industry where, uh, that's, that's rare. Um, so we all know this. Um, so, mm -hmm. so looking at kind of where I'm at and what did you do before you painted? Like, just so I can get a little background on you. What, what was, what was your, what's your story in that regard? Um, before what I did before painting, uh, for myself, I, I was a painter. I, I spent a year painting for another guy locally. Okay. Um, and that was my first kind of professional entry into painting. Sure. Um, and, and then I got sidetracked into going into business for myself with a couple other guys, uh, in retail and, uh, difference. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, but I'm a, I'm a service person. I, I do relationships. I connect with people. It's, Love it's, it. a, I can sell anything, Love um, it. you know, so it, like that was, that was good for a while. What was that? That's spoken like a true salesperson. I can yeah. sell anything. That's how you gotta um, be. So, I mean, that was, that was good for a while, but realistically, um, I think the same, the same issues that I'm aware of now, um, manifested themselves in a way, um, right. I, I didn't know enough of what I was doing to be able to position myself well, right from the start where I could grow that on a good foundation. I was just, just winging it. Everything was winging it. Just do this, do that, getting pulled you know, yeah. with this make idea it, and that idea. It, do what you got to do, kind of just head down, take the work, you know, and uh, go from there. Yeah, so, so my, my transition into painting was, uh, it was actually a desperation move. Uh, I, in the face of closing down that, that retail business, I, the, the day those doors closed, the next day I was back to being a full-time painter and I've been doing it since. So it's, it's a, you know, grace of God, miracle, Absolutely. you know, kind of thing um, that I, I was able to make it work, but I knew that I wouldn't be able to get out of that financial mess that I'd created for myself, yeah. just working a job. You can't make enough money just yeah. working a job. So it was either take a job and go bankrupt and deal with it or fight and try and create something new rich. for myself and, yeah. and fight through or go bankrupt wow. either way. You know, so. So you're, so you're here now, you have two and a half workers. You've been doing it since 2019. You're busy. You're at a point though, where you are looking at what you've created. And I, I assume that you're happy with it. I'm sure you do good work, mm -hmm. uh, but you know that there's more. You're unable to get to more because of the lack of production that you have. And you're balancing really not wanting to go to the jobs because you understand that you're much more effective in a business role, right? Mm-hmm. So when I look at that, I think, well, first of all, the number one thing that you mentioned to me that was most important to you was not touching a brush. And I think that mindset shift alone says that you're light years ahead of many others who, uh, who have trouble with that realization, but you're naturally good at sales, naturally good at business. It's not going to be that hard for you once you have that production in place. But I also know someone like you take so much pride in the end result because those are your promises that you're making to your customers that you almost feel pulled to babysit just to make sure your promises are being kept. Is that in line mm. with kind of what's going on? Yeah, pretty much. One, one caveat to that would be, um, you know, out, out of the pride thing and wanting to ensure that finished product is what I right. want it to be. Um, I, I would, I would much rather be in a position where I can, uh, you know, throughout the day, as I'm doing, getting my, my desk work done, I, I have the freedom to go pop into, you know, the job that they're working at, or maybe I split the crew and we're doing two jobs. 
I can go so stop today, in when I want. Well, today's just Thursday. Today's What's Thursday. going on today? So you're here in the office. You, I assume you have a job going on. Two. Two jobs. So you have one guy on each job currently? No, I got, I, I was uh, doing some reading, uh, been reading uh, The Art of War. Okay. Uh, and it's by Sun Tzu. Um, really, really good book. Lots of stuff that you can extrapolate sure. business concepts from. And uh, I was, I was thinking on the this concept of keeping your, keeping your troops together and their Agreed. strength in that. So I figured, okay, you know what, let's, you're not um, necessarily going to get more done by splitting everybody up and, and trying to literally do both projects at the same time, keep our force together and focused, knock the one out and then jump on to the next one. And, and I think that is generally going to be a more efficient um, use of energy than, uh, than splitting. I so agree. So are you finishing one today and then going to the next one? Well, my goal is that I'll have the one finished uh, tomorrow by noon okay. and then uh, chat with my guys already. Uh, uh, we're, we're likely going to do a weekend push to get the other one done. <clears throat> so things that normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't have multiple jobs scheduled. This was kind of an unfortunate overlap because I was waiting on um, kind of scheduled times from one of my builders. But I can't, I can't leave a schedule just sitting wide open with, oh, well, you know, hopefully there's work that week. Yeah, you had to I, need kind to, of, I need to fill that time. Yeah, So that if, time. if I don't have a time from you, or at least a loose time, I'm going to fill that spot in my schedule because okay. I need to make sure that my guys eat. I need to make sure yeah. I eat. So yeah. that's a, one of the, the challenges that I have right now is I, I my first priority is filling the schedule. My, my first priority can't be um, preferential treatment towards a builder, even though they are going to give me consistent work. It's, that's, that's nice. But I, I need to grow kind of to a point where, grow and organize to a point where I can, um, I can facilitate when that happens. When I end up double booked, it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, that's... So looking at looking at this you know first of all i'm looking at two guys and you have you're working for builders right now how do you like working for builders i mean i you... love working for builders okay so you're not interested in hitting the residential market no i love that too there's great margins there <laughs> but margin. realistically i need a uh, a new construction crew i need a repaint crew and i need a kitchen refinishing crew so I know yeah, so, I've, so, I've watched your stuff a fair bit. I know what you're going to say. I'm not specialized enough. Well, I don't think that's the case. I just, just so? be prepared, be prepared for four businesses, four different mm -hmm. interactions, four different sales processes, four different, um, you know, that's, that all, that's all I say. You could do whatever okay. you want. I just need you to understand that you will not be a hundred percent effective if one day you're going to somebody and you're having to do a consultation for a high-end kitchen, they may need a little more nurturing. They may, they may need to see a door and feel a door and really truly be sold on the idea that cabinets can be painted. And then you have to explain what that process is to them in a different fashion, different tonality, different, you know, if you really want to sell, like I know you do, then you go into a repaint and you know, they don't, they're getting ready to sell their house. So they really just want a price. And then you go to new construction, the builder doesn't even want to meet you. They just say, go look at, you know, so really like when you look at a business that's planning on scaling, everything should be at, at, at the very least in some fashion, some way predictable, because as much as I know that you want to get out of the brush off the ladder, there's going to be a point in time where you want to get out of the estimating out of the sales. So as you're trailblazing your business by being the role and then, ex and then setting the expectation of what that role should be doing to the next person, you need to be thinking like that in terms of sales. So for me, I had that idea early on that I wanted to create a business that was optimized, which means that we don't waste any resources. It's everything's super efficient in terms of like 
the amount of people we have, uh, the, the roles and responsibilities of those people. I'll give you an example. I don't even have an office administrator. I use obviously drip jobs for automating all my follow-ups and keep me organized. And I use my scheduling on there. All she does is answer the phone. I spent a hundred dollars a week on that. I have a supervisor who oversees jobs and does estimates and I schedule his estimates Monday. I, I, every day he has estimates eight and nine o'clock in the morning. So after those two estimates, so we will only do 10 estimates a week. After those two estimates, he's working with the crews every day, making sure that jobs are going smooth, helping mm -hmm. out where needed, taking care of touch-ups. You see how I'm saying? So I don't yeah. need to pay for a commission salesperson. And my supervisor is optimized. He's also doing estimates. He's not selling on the job. He's taking pictures, sending me notes, and I actually price the job from the office. So yeah. I don't leave this office during the day. I don't need to, you know what I'm saying? So I just want yeah. you to know that when it comes to that, if I did decide to take builders, if I did decide to take kitchen cabinets, if I did decide to take new construction, I would not be able to do this because he can't just pop in on a builder. You know, they may need certain, uh, you know, they need, they may need, um, a different type of estimate that outlines everything that they're being charged for. I can't just say, Hey, it's 2000 square feet, dollar 50 square foot, pay it. No, they probably want to know, you know, what each item is. You see where I'm saying? Like, do you mm -hmm. see where I'm going with that? So yeah. for me, I built the box. And when you tell me that you want to hit all these things, I got to ask you, what is the motive? Because the reality of the situation is you can, you can focus on one of these things, bro honestly, and be the best in your area and do the most business. If that's all that you focus on, if the goal is money, which majority of the time it is for good or bad, not saying that you're, you're swaying either way, you can bless people tremendously with more money, or you can be manipulative and chase power with more money. You have the choice. Money isn't the problem. The love of money is. So it's not, don't yeah. think money is the big deal. But what I'm getting at is if the focus is growth, which is more money, Yes, you can hit all of these things with the cabinet crew, with a new construction crew, uh, with a builder crew, and with a repaint crew. But guess what? They're going to be spread all over when if you just focused on one, you can hit the same goal. I call it you're either going to grow wide and low or you're going to grow strong and tall. And mm -hmm. my suggestion is strong and tall because you can focus on one building. But if you're, if you're long and wide, no one's going up. It's just you're, you think that you're going up, but you're just going wide. You see? So yeah. like... I'm catching you early on because I know that you, and just from talking to you, you're trying to set your sights on, I, I need a cabinet crew. I need a kitchen. I need a repaint crew. No, you don't. You need to pick one. Mm. <laughs> you need to pick one. I, and honestly, I think if you just focused on cabinets and you became a superior cabinet company in your area, you'd make more money than off all of these. And you can get a shop where you know, and from what I know about you just now, we just started talking, but I can get a feel for your personality. You would love a controlled environment where there's a shop where you are spraying cabinets. You can walk in there. You can see the quality of the cabinet. You can see, you can have all of your inventory there instead of kind of just being spread out right now. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like that would be ideal for you. I don't know. I'm just shooting. Yeah. Out. No, that's, that's true. Um, yeah. I mean, this is, this is one of the things I've, if I look back uh, throughout life, this is one of the things that I, I've always had come back to bite me in the ass is I'm very good at, at justifying to myself why doing more is better. You know, that's, I, I want to do everything, you know, it's uh, not, not, jack of all trades master of none like generally when i when i do something even if i'm doing a lot of things i personally am very good at it i pick things up very very easily um but i'm i don't want to do the work so i well, i can't it's not just i can't so much think like that my guys aren't going to be um you know they're not going to be able to do a bunch of things That's as right. well as i would i need to be able to train them on this is the one thing you do Right. Um, so you can attached. also open up your labor pool too, because if you're the type of business where, and things happen, you you might run into a situation where, Hey, your cabinet crew fell out and then you might need to bring your repaint guys. Cause you have a, a very picky cabinet person that needs their cabinets done. And then mm -hmm. you're going to expect your repaint crew to go do your cabinet jobs and you know, they're going to get stressed out. And then they're going to say, I don't really know how to do cabinet. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. specialize train specialize all we do bro literally for five years is and i've dabbled dude i've not i'm not perfect i've dabbled into epoxy i've dabbled i even 
tried. We my, do that. <laughs> yeah. I even tried um, cabinets once or twice. Each time I'm like, every time I do one of these, it takes away from a repaint job. Every single time. Every time I do it. I mean, it's so there's that much repaint work out there that it's taking away. And the reality of the situation is with employees, they really, in the long term, it's exciting for them to do something different every once in a while. But in mm -hmm. the long term, they don't want to think that they have, they don't want to go into a new trade every week. Yeah. You know, they want to get great at what they're doing and you can create a duplicatable process that you can scale. So if you're again, cabinet coating, repainting, all we do is interior and exterior painting. That is it. I won't stain your decks. I won't do your garage floor. I won't do your cabinets. I say no more than I say yes throughout the week. But guess what? It keeps us focused, keeps my guys consistent, and we are, have, have no shortage of work. And I still stay in this office. That's my focus. Mm. You know, I think probably the, the driving factor for why I've, I've spread into so many different areas um, has just been from that, that need to make sure that the schedule is full, right? You know, work, uh, an uh, opportunity to fill a week comes up. It's not what I primarily do, but right. everyone needs to be paid. So of course it's going to be, you know, yes. where that comes That's from though. Scarcity mindset, not scarcity. I think it's just your marketing isn't consistent. Mm. It's not dialed in. And when people have the need, they can't find you. I think that's what it comes down to because if you were marketing as a cabinet coding specialist, you are not going to get new construction builders reaching out to you. You're not going to no. get, you know, and if you knew that your marketing was going to bring you leads for the jobs that you wanted, your ideal job types, you're in a position where you can literally say, I love to do cabinets. I love to do repaints. I can, it's all about your marketing. If you knew that the work was coming mm -hmm. in, you wouldn't say yes to whatever comes your way. But obviously you're in a survival mode in most cases mm -hmm. where if a build, builder approaches you, hey man, I have this job. Yeah, I'll take it. Bec but then what does that do? That lowers your awareness, lowers your, you know, um, I guess fight or flight mode because you secured the job and you don't search for, the marketing to get you the job. You don't like, that's the thing. Like if you, if you were two weeks without work and a marketing guy came up to you and said, Hey man, I can guarantee you cabinet leads. I need you to pay me this much, but I'll get you this many leads. You'd be like, yeah, dude, I, I need it. But the problem is, is that you keep being sustained by these builders at low margins that you don't really have that, that desire to, to find solid marketing to bring you the jobs that you really want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Builders are nice because they give you work every so often, but think about the employees. That environment is cold. It's empty. It's just kind of just like they're in a factory. You know, what's sustained my guys for so long is the fact that they go to a new house every day or every few days, but they get a new homeowner every few days who mm -hmm. tips them, who makes them food, who, who loves the end result, who comes in when they're painting and asks, do you think we should do that? Or do you think we should do that? And my, my, my project manager has an opportunity to say, actually, you know what? We should do this. And then they write a beautiful review about him. And then I show him and I say, Hey man, you're doing a great job. You don't get to do any of that, dude. And that's, that's when we get to morale. That's when we get to atmosphere. Your guys right now are probably in an empty house. I could be wrong, but I'm, I'm going here. Empty house, listening to music, doing the same thing every day. They might enjoy that. Okay. That might be their personality, but if you're trying to create that atmosphere of customer service, like you said, is one of your strengths. You can't do that with a builder. I'd, I'd argue that a little bit. Um, the the builder, my my main builder, um, connected with him last year. Uh, him and I are actually, we're almost instantly became very very good friends. We're we're quite close. Um, kind of a, a mastermind relationship. Okay. Um, so that's been very good, very good atmosphere working for that builder. Um, right now, my guys are actually, we're doing a repaint right now. And the other job we need to get to is finishing up a, a new build. So we're doing both. Um, and I mean, those, those two things, new construction paints and, and, uh, interior exterior repaints for homeowners. That is realistically where I, I'd like to be. Um, cabinet painting, you know, in my area, I can charge pretty much whatever the hell I want. 
Like I don't, no I don't touch there. Yeah. There's very minimal competition for that. Um, you know, so I can, I don't touch a, a kitchen for anything less than, um, uh, 55, $6,500, nice. you know, and you can knock that out in, you know, if it goes well four days, but there's so much opportunity for it to not go well. It's, uh, it's almost not worth the headache. So so when you said when I well when I said that about the builder and obviously every builder is different but that's the relationship that you have with the builder. Mm -hmm. The builder isn't there with your guys when they're painting. I know that. If he is, he's I mean he's a superhero, I guess. I he, he stops in at every job every day. He's a great guy, but no, he's not the, the relationship is different. The relationship is between you two. I'm we're talking scaling. We're not yeah. talking now. I'm talking scaling to the point where you can be absent and your team still has the love for what they're doing because sometimes the love for what we're doing isn't just about what we're doing it's who we're doing it for okay mm -hmm. that's what it comes down to and that like i'm talking about how can we keep your guys with you for as long as possible as happy as possible enjoying what they do helping the people that come under them and and really just serving your customers to the you know to the highest you know possible way i mean and for me it's like the first thing you said is like oh me and this builder are great friends that's great your goal is to get out of this production yeah. your goal is to you know that's awesome i'm talking about my guys build relationships with my customers all i got to do is focus on my guys and my customers are taken care of mm -hmm. you're focusing on your customer and that's taking away a lot of time for you when if you just focus on the guys in that regard and putting them in positions to be serving customers like the repaint customers all the time mm -hmm. um again we're just thinking long term here the second thing yeah. is when you look at these two jobs you and i both know that the margins on repaints and the margins on builder work are totally different correct yeah so when you give uh, someone a, yeah like when you give someone a raise like you know what i'm saying like you need to be basing that off of like something you know and if the mm -hmm. if the margins aren't consistent you know um you could be like, you know, it could be, you could be losing money in some cases. And like, it's the same amount of time, same amount of work, and you're making less than you could have made doing the other type of work. You know, and I don't know, you know, yeah. this, I just want you to know that the inconsistencies there, you know, don't, um, I guess they don't correct themselves when you give a raise, like you're giving a raise for some reason. And then they go from working a 40% margin job to maybe something's like 30 to 25%. Maybe you only make, you know, 10% on builder work. When, if you did a repaint, you'd make 20 to 30% and you could justify those raises. If you mm -hmm. do builder work one week after the other, you're not really pocketing much money. You know, yeah. you're paying out these things. So you know, I know you knew this, you said it when I first brought it up about niching down, but I just hope I, I helped you kind of see even how much that's really going to determine whether or not you can free yourself. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it definitely cuts through, uh, cuts through my bullshit a little bit. So that's, that's very helpful for me. Um, and I, I, I appreciate what you're saying with, um, you know, based on what I, you know, if I want to pay my guys X amount, um, you know, if one week we're working on, on a, a house repaint and I know that, I know that financially it works with that, that's great. But then back. the next week <laughs> it's, it doesn't leave my margins in a healthy enough place. I'm just, I, I'm taking, taking away all the momentum. Um, that's the word right there. That's yeah. the most important word in business is momentum. Yeah. One week I'm building momentum and then the next week I have a drain on it. Yeah. So, yeah. I think the secret for you, I mean, it doesn't sound like you have trouble finding good help. Normally you would say something like whenever I do these, that's like the big thing. I can't find good help. You have good guys. You're a good guy. So I'm sure you can attract good people to work for you and I'm sure you pay well. The secret for you is marketing. And honestly, bro, I mean, it's really just having confidence in whatever that marketing is for you. Yeah. Um, you know, do you yeah, I definitely, to... I definitely need guidance on, on getting the marketing to function properly um you know I, i've been doing i've done some things to kind of get a foundation for for that marketing to be effective like I, I push google reviews as much as i can okay uh, how many i don't have a ton yet okay. what was that how many do you have uh, i think right now i have 13 okay. um it's, it's amazingly challenging to get people to to follow through even after they say yes i'll leave a well, review you know what the secret is I, you may be doing this i'm just going to tell you what my secret is is Make sure they have a link to click. I, I have not been sending a link. 
I, I can <laughs> no, actually drip that. jobs. We, I know you wanted to see it, but drip yeah. jobs, when, when you mark a job as complete, it sends that link right away. So that's just an, in another thing you can automate, but really that's the key. I have over 255 star reviews. It starts with the, the ask, like I'm sure you do. Hey, would you mind leaving us a review? And they'll say, yes. How many reviews do you leave personally? Like, you know how hard it is to actually like yeah. leave a review for somebody, but if they sent you a text message with a link, it's like, all right, they're making it easy. Boom. Let me just knock it out. Right. Mm -hmm. No one likes to leave a review. It's like the worst thing ever sometimes, but if they had a great experience, they, they feel like they owe you the review. So mm -hmm. what I would always focus on is like, try to do that one extra thing that, you know, cause we're expected to do the scope of the work. But yeah. if you find that one extra thing, like a little thing that you can find in the house to do, then when you ask for that review, it's like, wow, they did that for me. Let me do something for them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I had a, uh, an experience with that. Uh, it was last week. I think it was last week. Um, followed up with a, a customer had a, had a small job. They needed the garage painted. Um, I didn't have time. So I, I handed it over to um, I have a, one local guy that, that I use as a sub for small stuff. Um, and I followed up with her and I just asked, you know, how things, how things went, how was the experience and asked her what she would rate the experience out of five. Love it. And, and she said four. And so I, I asked, you know, could you elaborate on that? What would, what would need, what would have needed to be different to make that five instead of four? And it was, um, she wasn't watching, like she wasn't checking in on the guy, but uh, she, she thought she heard, because she's working from home, she thought she heard him on the phone quite a bit throughout the day. And uh, it turned out he was just listening to an audiobook. But <laughs> <laughs> so she, she was concerned about how, how many hours he would have charged me for. And he was, he was right bang on for what I had expected. Um, but uh, so what I did was I, I took, told her I was going to take an hour off of what I was going to charge her just to compensate for that. Um, and, and just spent a little bit of time texting with her and just, just communicating. And then at the end, I asked, you know, if, if you feel like you could leave us a five-star review, I would really appreciate it. It goes a long way to help us earn the trust of potential clients. And sure enough, I, I got a, it went from four out of five to a five-star review on Google. And, and it was just that communication. Yeah. And now we're pricing out, I just sent her a quote last night for, um, a repaint. They just bought a 3,100 square foot house. Mm. So, right. you know, it's, I, I know the fundamentals of a lot of this stuff. It's just, well, look at it like this though. You, that was a phenomenal example of really just using, utilizing good communication, caring enough mm -hmm. to call, caring enough to ask, caring enough to inquire, not just saying, Oh, okay. Well, and then being okay with letting go of money because you understand that you'll get more and you, you probably well, this this yeah. is this skill set is is something like I, I know I have a different perspective than a lot of people in my yeah. position. Yeah. Um, every like I've I've had lots of screw ups that have cost me a lot of money, and that that's not in itself the worst thing in the world because it's given me plenty of opportunities to really sharpen my skills on um, how to manage, you know, sub five star situations and I, i've been able numerous times i've been able to take um an experience with a client where it you know something wasn't great and right. i'm able to just work with that and and kind of turn it around into a positive experience so I, I would like to avoid having to do that no, well but well keeping that reputation high online is key because you don't really have the luxury of telling customers who read negative reviews what happened like she yeah. could have like took that and said, Hey, this guy was on the phone the whole time. You don't really get the opportunity besides in your response, but no one's going to take your word for it. No. You know, that's just not how it works. So for you to be proactive is key, but really when it comes down to reviews, I always look at like, we have to understand how people buy our services and painting. And for the majority of people, it starts off with a Google search. Now it used to be, 
you ask your friends at coffee or lunch or, you know, like word of mouth was crazy back then. Hey, who do you know that painted? Oh, who painted your house? Maybe 20% of the time now it's yard signs. It's, you know, like you drive past the neighborhood, someone's painting, you'll make that call 20% of the time. Now, 80% of the time people go right to Google painter near me and they find, and they, you know what the first thing they look at? Most five-star reviews. That's that what they mean. Yes. Everyone does it now. I mean, even me for anything, who's got the most five-star reviews. If they don't have a certain amount, everyone has a certain threshold, like under 10, I won't even call. Oh, you only, you only did 10 jobs. No, I want the guy with 25, 30. That gives me the best chance of getting a good result. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the mentality, right? Is I need to find, I got to make sure that I'm getting the best possible result. That's mentality. So when I go there, that's, that's what we're doing is customers are going to Google searching. Now, when they search, can you be found? Like, do they have renegade painting on there? What's the name of your city? Morden, Manitoba. How do I spell that? M O R D E N. And Morden in, uh, Another is there is that it? Yeah, just Morden, uh, MB. Canada. Well, yeah. All right, so um, I'm gonna put painting painting contractor. So Morden MD. So it's called is it called Morden? Just Morden Canada. Morden Manitoba. Oh Manitoba. All right, Morden Manitoba painting contractor. Okay, are you in a small town? Yeah, we're pretty small. Okay. So is there a big city that you service or is it, um, we do a little bit of work in, in Winnipeg. Um, okay. Be Winnipeg. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So actually, you know, believe it, believe it or not. And I know you probably know this, but you are the highest rated painting contractor in your area on Google. That's phenomenal. Besides, yeah. um, decor cabinets, I think they're a cabinet, and they're a cabinet builder. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they're just a builder. So they're a, Tom, they're a, a sizable cabinet manufacturer. Tom, how far away is Winnipeg from you? Uh, about an hour. Okay. Winnipeg. Um, how do I spell Winnipeg? W I N N I P E G. Yeah. Winnipeg, Canada. Cause Winnipeg. Yeah, like come city, up right? there. yeah. So Winnipeg being an hour away, obviously big city. Um, the highest rated painting contractor on here only has 57 reviews. Okay. So that's nothing, um, for such a huge city. That's a pretty big city, right? It's, I mean, compared to cities in the yeah, state, compared, it's, yeah. it's a small, it's a, small it's a, either a small city or a big town, but I'm sure there's a lot of work being requested yeah. there. Right. Yeah. So looking on Google here, I mean, you know, just the reality situation is, is that like, if you were, if you were rankable on there, um, you would definitely get probably way more calls than we're getting now. Um, I'm just saying that like, it would be, it would be why it's only an hour away and yeah. you're really trying to, you know, I know that if you do some work there, you'd be comfortable going there. Um, mm -hmm. That's something to think about, but you're already ranked pretty good there um, in your, uh, in your town, which is great. You know, uh, really what it comes down to is that is a passive approach to marketing. It's out of your control, right? So you have to wait for people to search for you. Mm -hmm. um, there's an aggressive form of marketing, which comes in the form of really affiliating with um, lead service generators. Um, I would say that that's a little more aggressive because they're being aggressive on the ads to get attention. And then they are facilitating the communication between you and the customer. Home stars is the big one in Canada. I know you've heard of it, right? You could do mailers. Um, mailers are still pretty popular, but that's aggressive. You're putting it out there. You're getting in their face. You know, um, Facebook ads could be aggressive depending on how you approach it. I honestly think there's an opportunity for you on Facebook. You know, mm -hmm. I think that if you, yeah. I've had some uh, some decent success with uh, boosting posts um, on yeah. Facebook. Love it, uh, but it, very inconsistent. So uh, I know I could use um, use some education on on how to properly set up ads on Facebook so they will be effective every time. Right. Uh, you know, just for for shits and giggles, the other day, the other day, about a month ago. Um, I decided to give Facebook's automated, um, ad program a try. It's supposed to improve itself over, over time. And I don't know that I've had anything measurable come from it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cancel that and, 
And that yeah. was a Facebook ad pro, uh, ad campaign? Yeah. So that's where I'm saying that in terms of marketing, my suggestion would be you need an expert. You need somebody that's doing this full time, that's overseeing this. And yeah, you talked about earlier, you understand the, the investments that need to be made. Obviously, you got to, you're, you're one of the cool things about hiring a marketer, if they don't produce your results, it's easy to see, you know, you'll be like, hey, where are my leads? You know, so it's like one of those things where I think that go for the expert. It's kind of like me with like, like accounting, dude, I do not want to do accounting. I do not care about books. I don't want to, I don't even want to look at them. Yeah. Let me hire somebody who's way better at this than me. And they'll get me to my goal of having good books, you know, good accounting. Mm -hmm. I have great accounting. I pay for it every month. Same yeah. thing early on in my business. I just spent so much money on a lead generation service like home advisor. I didn't want to do it. I just wanted my phone to ring and that's what happened. But what's cool is I could tell home advisor and similar to home stars. Hey, I only want interior and exterior leads. Don't send me anything else. Guess what I got interior and exterior leads. So it allowed me to niche down, you know, mm -hmm. and I could focus on growing my business rather than canvassing for work. I mean, think about it like this reality. Of the situation is in your area, you may have a hundred people today, hundred people. That's nothing. You probably have a hundred people in your neighborhood, hundred people that want a job done. Right? So, the reality of the situation is how many of those people are going to be able to call or reach out to you for that work. And again, we know that the big focus is getting your name in front of them. So, you know, that's marketing, that's branding. Um, but I would suggest making sure you have somebody to help you with that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, that would be definitely would be the way to go. So I know we hit a lot, you know, I think, um, we can kind of close out here, man. Any, any outlying questions on, uh, anything, any, any major points, you know, I think that was this helpful. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely helpful. Um, I don't know if I have any, any pressing questions at the moment. Um, you know, I think if we could wrap it up to like an action step, you know, I always try to leave you with something. I think that hire a marketer, spend the money on it. You know, um, that would be number one, just somebody that can, dial in what you want to do, get that service in front of people who want it done. And I mean, and then your problems are very, very small. You can find more workers. It sounds like sell, sell the jobs, close the deals, do what do niche down, perfect your system, grow it. You know, that would be number one. Um, and I know we talked a lot about, you know, some other things about, you know, narrowing down your services and stuff like that, but that would be key for me you know, get the marketer in there. And that's going to, that's going to resolve that issue is get somebody who knows what they're doing. So. All right. Cool, man. All right, brother, let me close out. And, uh, you know, it was awesome chatting with you, man. You too. I appreciate it. All right, brother. Drip Jobs CRM is finally here. That's right. So Drip Jobs is an automation platform for contractors, home service professionals. that's going to automatically follow up with your customers it's going to allow you to send invoices, estimates. It's going to allow you to send out blast marketing emails to individuals based on where they are in the buying process. This software is next level. And I'm reaching out to you. You're a listener of this podcast, and I want you to be one of the first ones to give it a shot. So if you want to see what Drip Jobs can do for your business, I'd love for you to head over to dripjobs.com sign up for a free demo and get your team involved and let us sit with you and show you how powerful this software is. It's going to save you time. It's going to make you money and you're going to love the features that are built into drip jobs. So if you want to check it out, head over to dripjobs.com and we will give you first priority being a podcast listener uh, to be one of the very first to try out drip jobs in your home service business. I'm super excited to share that with you and I'll catch you on the next episode.